Chris Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone, in the AFC Championship. This week, the Jets face the Indianapolis Colts for the second time this season. New York is poised to redeem themselves for a 16-7 loss to these Colts back in week 8 of the regular season. Indy is ready to put up a little competition, though. Andrew Luck is healthy and has a ton of experience, now being in his 13th year as the quarterback of the Colts. He has outstanding talent around him in Marlon Mack, T.Y. Hilton, and former Jet Robbie Anderson. But it's noteworthy that their number one wideout, Devin Funches, is injured and will not be playing in this game. The Colt defense will try to make up for that loss with the D-line bookended by Francisco Porter and Nate Pickens. They'll be in charge of getting pressure in the Jets' backfield. Couple that with Devondre Campbell and Darius Leonard, who make the front seven a complete package. Then you have a defensive backfield that is strong as well. Well, at least the first string. What the Colts are missing is depth, and we'll see if that has an impact as the game drags on into the second half. The Jets have been relying on a very stiff run defense and lots of pressure on the quarterback that could get exposed by a very talented Andrew Luck. Will that defense hold up today? And if so, will the rushing game of the Jets take center stage or will they have to rely on a very inconsistent passing game behind Sam Darnold. Let's find out as they take on the Colts in the AFC Championship game here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Second year man Sylvester Fincher is back deep for the Colts and he takes it in the end zone and takes a knee. So out to the 25 yard line, it'll come. Here comes Andrew Luck. His numbers on the season are good. 2,800 yards, almost 2,900 yards, 21 touchdowns, and only seven interceptions. With Mack in the backfield, it's a quick pass, and that one is completed over the middle to his tight end, Foster Moreau. Handoff to Mack is stopped by Taj Little. Third and five coming up. Luck takes the snap, throws, and it's incomplete, broken up by Brian Poole, and the Jets will take over. In the backfield, Jackson gets the handoff up the middle, and he has a nice gain out to the 47 for nine yards. Third and one. Wesco gets the call, and up the middle he goes all the way into Colt territory at the 42. Second and 10. Jackson is taken down in the backfield. Rookie Anthony Richardson in on the stop, bringing up third and 12. Donald drops back, throws, and it's intercepted. Kenny Moore will take it the distance. Case and Shropshire just doesn't have the speed to keep up with him. It's all the way to the house. I'm not sure what Darnold was seeing, but three defenders on one receiver, uh, that just isn't a good thing to be throwing into. Even if it is John Ross that you're trying to get the ball to. So Indianapolis takes the early lead Seven to nothing with that return. Darnold takes the snap, throws complete to Ross, and there's a flag on the play. Jeremy Irons holding, and now it's first and 20. And that one is caught. Carl Arsenault is tackled at the 35 yard line. Coming up second and three. Jackson takes it up the middle, gets the first down out to the 39. 
Darnold back to pass again, throws long, and it's intercepted for the second time in the first quarter. Darnold put just a little bit too much air under it, and Solomon Rose comes up with the interception. So first and 10, luck out of the shotgun, throws, and it's tipped and intercepted. Julian Love taking it back inside Colt territory to the 34 yard line. Luck was trying to get it to Robbie Anderson on the left side. He just couldn't handle a football and popped it up and it was intercepted by Julian Love. If you're a Jets fan, you can't help but be happy about that because Robbie Anderson let his contract go because he just wanted way too much money. And who took his place? John Ross. Now from the 34, Jackson takes it up the middle and he's tackled at the 29 yard line. Second and four. Again, Jackson going up the left side hash marks. He's down to the 18. First and 10 out of the eye formation. Josh Jacobs has a good run all the way down to the 10. Second and two out of the shotgun. Darnold gives off to Jacobs and he's down to the four. That gives the Jets a first and goal. Up the middle goes Jackson and into the end zone. That was outstanding blocking because if you'll notice, <laughs> Jackson wasn't even touched going into the end zone. So that brings us to a tie ball game, seven to seven here in the first quarter. Luck with the handoff to Mack and he stopped in the backfield. Blake Cashman takes him down for a four yard loss. After a DeMarcus Faulkner offside penalty, Mack takes it up the hash marks on the left side and is all the way out to the 34. Third and one, and it's Blake Cashman again with the stop in the backfield. He is just a one man wrecking machine. After a jet three and out, it's the Colts from the 44-yard line. Mack gets the handoff and is taken down. Uh-oh. Marcus May is injured, being escorted to the locker room. This is not good news for the Jets. Third and 12. And luck, that pass was inaccurate. It <laughs> looked like it slipped right out of his hand. And that brings up fourth down. And after another jet three and out. Luck from the 43 yard line this time has off to Mack over the left side and he gets to the 48. Second and five. Luck dancing around in the backfield completes it to Robbie Anderson. But Taylor Yates is downfield illegally. Frank Reich trying to Get the flag picked up and he can't do it. Second and 10, Mack up the middle and he's to midfield for an eight yard gain. Third and two now. The throw complete to Anderson, no. It was incomplete and now the Jets have another chance and it's Jackson out to the 31 yard line for an 11 yard pickup. Five minutes to go in the first half. First and 10, Jackson with a run around the left side and another first down for the Jets. Now in second and 13, the screen pass is stuffed. Chad Thomas gets to Darnold before he can release the football. And that brings up third and 21. The pass is complete out to Terry McLaurin to the 48, but shy of the first down marker. So 
The Colts are going to get this one back. And they do so at the 13 yard line. Luck back to pass, completes this one to Moreau. And that brings us to the two minute warning. Seven to seven is your score. Second and one. Luck back to pass, throws complete to Moreau again and he picks up the first down at the 22, does not get out of bounds. Third and one, the pass complete to Moreau. That is Luck's favorite target here at the end of the half. His third reception and a first down. Now another pass to Moreau again to the numbers on the right side out to the 42. And this one's complete to T.Y. Hilton for a nine yard pickup. Out of the shotgun, Luck jumping around in the backfield and throws incomplete. And there's a flag. Marlon Mack is guilty of holding. And that drives the Colts back another 10. Luck throws and almost intercepted. Chris Gonzalez getting in on the play. And the pass goes out to Mack and he has the first down all the way to the 40 yard line of the Jets. Luck in the shotgun. Back to pass and he goes down. Ethan Goodman coming off the edge and it brings up second and 19. Back to pass again, over the middle, complete to Moreau, and he gets the first down, but with nine seconds left, the Colts boot through a field goal, and it's 10 to seven. Austin Seibert puts the Colts on top here at the break. Now for a halftime report, let's go to Eurocat Baby. We'll get you back to the AFC Championship game in MetLife Stadium in a moment. But many, especially those of the Jets faithful, will be interested in the status of Marcus May, who went out earlier in the half. It seems that he has a dislocated shoulder, and the extent of the injury won't be known until an MRI can be done. For now, he's out for the rest of the game, and taking his spot in the lineup will be Chris Gonzalez. He has some big shoes to fill, as I'm sure the Colts will try to exploit the lack of experience on his side of the field. The Jets are down by three here at the break, so the obvious goal is to be able to come back in this game and move on to Super Bowl 59. Stay with us to find out what happens, because we'll be right back. Welcome back to a snowbound MetLife Stadium. For the second week in a row, the weather has been an issue in a game dominated by the defenses and the Jets behind by field goal, can New York establish anything on offense? Up to now, both the run and the pass attacks have been halted by Indy. Will the domination of the defenses continue or will either offense take control of this game? Let's find out as we continue our coverage here in East Rutherford. Donald and the Jets have it at the 25 yard line. The handoff goes to Jackson. He's up the middle for a five yard gain to the 30. Now on third and five, Jackson tries to stretch this out to the left side. Can't get out of the backfield. And that is a stop by the Colts and they get the ball back. So from their own 45 yard line. Up the middle, oh, and stopped dead in his tracks by Harvey Gabriel is Marlon Mack. And that brings up second and 13. Luck keeps the ball and he is snowed under. Trying the read option, he gets stopped in the backfield. Third and 16. The pass complete to T.Y. Hilton. Uh, but that is well short of the first down. The punt is fielded by Howard. He heads left, has lots of room, and he's got a couple men to beaten out of bounds. 
finally at the 44 yard line of the Colts. The Jets line up with Jackson in the backfield. Darnold drops back, completes over the middle to Ross. He's down to the 29 yard line and a first down for the Jets. His first reception on the afternoon. That is surprising. Uh, well, not so. Kind of seeing how the ball game is going for the Jets and Darnold with an unusual rush, 17 yards on the pickup. Jackson up the middle, and he goes to the eight-yard line. A five-yard pickup. Jacobs in the backfield, gets the ball, spins, and pushes his way all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. You can see on the replay how Jacobs just kept his feet going and powered his way into the end zone. And that will give the Jets the lead back at 14 to 10. Now the Colts from their own 24. Pass on the wide receiver screen, stopped in the backfield by Taj Little. Now to the shotgun. The handoff goes to Mack, runs into his own man and gets caught behind the line of scrimmage. Now it's third and 13. Luck back to pass, completes this one, but Anderson unable to get anywhere near the first down and the Colts have to punt. The Jets from their own 37, the handoff goes to Jackson, right side, and he has the first down all the way out to the 49 yard line. The Jets are in plus territory again. Jacobs, the deep back, gets the handoff, up the hash marks on the left side, and he's to the 44. Now third and one, Wesco, Gets the first down, barely. But that brings us to the end of the third quarter with their score, 14 to 10, Jets. Now the handoff goes to Jackson. A big hole, and he's goal all the way down to the 15-yard line. After a holding penalty on Kevin Lawrence, first down pass is complete to Arsenal. Well, short of the marker, it's now third and 13. The pass to Arsenal again. Did he get the first down? Yes, it's first and goal at the five yard line. Herndon in motion to the left. And Jackson gets the handoff, powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. The Jets are racking up the rushing total yards and taking an awful lot of time off the clock as well. And taking now a two score lead into the fourth quarter. The Colts from their own 20 yard line. The pass is almost intercepted by Chris Gonzalez yet again. Now second and 10, the pass over the middle, incomplete. Bounced around quite a bit before it fell to the ground. Now third and 10, the pass is intercepted by Taj Little and he takes it the distance all the way to the house. A 25 yard pick six. Luck realizing that he's down by two scores, tries to make something happen. See Brown, Edwin Brown, his rookie, tries to get it to him, and there is Taj Little to make the interception. Getting some congratulations on the sideline for a job well done. And if I'm not mistaken, that is his first interception as a Jet. Here comes Andrew Luck, 11 of 20, 92 yards and two interceptions. That is unreal for a quarterback of his caliber. And down he goes 
Demarcus Faulkner gets to him at the 15 yard line for a seven yard loss. Out of the shotgun. The pass is complete. Out to Mack and he gets back to the 20 yard line. Third and 12. And Mack gets the draw play handoff and I'm not sure why that they would do that with 12 yards to go. Now on fourth and eight, the pass is over the top of the receiver and out of bounds. So the Jets take over at the 25. Jackson up the middle, first down to the 13. A gain of 11 yards and now on second and 10, Jackson again up the middle and you can tell that the Colts are just running out of gas. Back to pass. And it's complete in the end zone to Rig Howard. Another touchdown and they take a commanding lead, 35 to 10. Haven't even let the Colts sniff the end zone here in the second half. And with three, almost four minutes left, can the Colts do anything to get going? And that's broken up by Justin Lane. Luck back again, throws deep, and it's broken up by Julian Love. Intended for Brown, but uh, that is an excellent play by Julian Love to knock that one away and prevent a long reception. Ramsey and Odom, the second string now in there for the Jets. A flag on the play, and that is holding by Jose Hickman. And that'll take him back 10 yards, second and 20. Screen pass to Jacobs, has lots of room and all the way out to the 43. That still leaves five yards to go for the first down. The pass out to Knox, and he has the first down, finally tackled at the 46 of the Colts. That brings us to the two-minute warning with your score 35 to 10. The Jets are having no problems. The handoff goes to Jackson again. Just a few yards, fourth and five, and they can't get the first down, so the Colts have another shot. Luck throws deep, and Robbie Anderson tried to catch it and just couldn't handle the pass. Two seconds left, one, no time left on the clock, and it's intercepted by Chris Gonzalez. The man that took over for Marcus May takes it back inside Colt territory and the game is over. The Jets are going to the Super Bowl for the third time in team history. It just seemed like the Colts defense got tired as the game progressed. I was concerned that the lack of solid depth may impact Indy a bit and I was right. It just looked to me like toward the end of the third quarter, we were seeing a gas Colt defense, and that's when the Jets really started to pick up steam in the rushing game. The Jets' O-line was blowing holes in the Colt defense wide enough for <laughs> even me to run through. The Colts were held to just 90 yards of offense for the game, and only nine yards of that was acquired via of the ground attack. You could also tell this was a defensive game since the Jets only had 275 yards of offense, but get this, the running game behind Justin Jackson had 186 of those yards. Like I said, the Colts just looked gassed late in the game. Jackson finished with 126 yards on 22 carries 
and I've been saying it all season long, when the running game gets at least 20 to 30 touches, a game pounding the rock becomes a real asset to New York. Now, I'm not going to say that the run is ineffective if they don't get that many carries, but somewhere we have to let the numbers do the talking for us. Only one player was able to gain over 50 yards in the game. That was a tight end for the Colts, Foster Moreau. Definitely not the day of the passing attack on either side. The defense, however, was quite the different story. The Jets not only stopped Marlon Mack from being a factor in this game, but constant pressure put on Andrew Luck meant throwing the ball either before he was ready or throwing off target. For a quarterback of Luck's caliber to be held under 100 yards through the air, less than 50% complete, and three interceptions is phenomenal for the Jets' defense. The replacement for Marcus May, Chris Gonzalez, made a solid impact on the game, even coming up with an interception late in the game. And now we need to find out what happened in the NFC Championship game, which pitted the Cowboys against the Saints. And Dallas outlasted New Orleans in a second-half 42-point scoring frenzy. That means that New York is headed to Minneapolis to play the Dallas Cowboys in Super Bowl 59. Dallas is looking to repeat as Super Bowl champions this year, and if any team can do it, it would be these Cowboys. The Jets did play them in preseason, and <laughs> they just got trampled by Ezekiel Elliott. That has been the Cowboys' strength, and they happen to be using it with outstanding success this season. Elliott is out front as the NFL rushing leader by just under 500 yards on the year, leaving everyone else in the dust. They, along with the Jets, play a very run-heavy defense and should be a problem for both the rushing and passing attack of New York's offense to contend with. Uh, Prescott and Darnold have passed for around the same number of yards this season, but the big difference becomes when you look at how many interceptions have been thrown and their individual touchdown-interception ratio. Prescott is much more careful with the ball than he is Darnold, and we'll see if that holds true in the Super Bowl as well. Well, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The defense came up huge in this one, taking the ball away three times for the Jets. That makes seven interceptions in the last two weeks. I think that may be a tall order against Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, but keeping that ratio alive is what this defense lives for. One thing is certain, though, finding an answer to stopping, <laughs> or at least slowing down, Elliott is going to be the key if the Jets have any hopes of another Lombardi trophy. Making sure that Darnold is a little more careful with the football is a prime concern as well. He's thrown 19 touchdowns this season to 15 interceptions, and that could be something that the Dallas defense may try to exploit. Can New York bring home its third Lombardi trophy and put to bed any hopes of a repeat Super Bowl for Dallas? Be with us to find out when the Jets take on the Cowboys in Super Bowl 59. And until we see you in U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>